What's up everyone, Adam here from Cape Crawlers and this is the SCX24 C10 build video. Story time my friends. Once upon a time there was a little SCX24 C10. This little C10 was purchased by a teenage boy who used it sparingly but ultimately put it on the shelf and that's where it sat for most of its young life. One day the teenager realized that he really needed money to fuel his motocross hobby. So he decided to sell the little C10 on the Facebook marketplace. That's when a relative newcomer to the 124 hobby stumbled across it online and just happened to be two or three miles down the road. In a fire sale, the newcomer picked up the C10 at a bargain price of $70. The C10 was excited that it was going to a new home, but the newcomer ultimately bought the C10 just to have as an extra in case his young son had company over who wanted to use a crawler as well. Thus, the C10 once again sat on the shelf, except worse this time, the newcomer robbed parts off of the C10 as the other more fancy rigs broke, or he took the upgrades that were already on the little C10 and put them on other rigs. But the little C10 stood fast and waited patiently for its time. Slowly but surely, the newcomer started to take the C10 out a little bit more. The more the newcomer used the C10 and took it out, the more he started to realize the capability of this little truck. The C10 knew that as long as it stayed steadfast, reliable, and gave it its all every time that it was out, that it would slowly turn the tide, which it started to do. Eventually, the newcomer started to realize this and began putting upgraded parts onto the C10 rather than taking them off. Eventually, the C10 would be taken out more and more to different locations and different places and be enjoyed more and more thoroughly as a primary rig rather than a backup rig. And thus the C10 knew that it stayed patient and it stayed reliable and it continued to perform its best in all situations that its time in the spotlight would eventually come. Well my friends, that time is today and this is the SCX24 C10 build video that many of you have been asking me for for a long time. So let's get in it. All right, the C10, let's get into this thing. So the C10 is such a fun little rig, and as you can tell by that story, which is totally true, that I bought this just to use as an extra, and it slowly over time has grown on me to be one of my favorites. And the capabilities of this thing are amazing. It is such a sleeper. that it, it can walk circles around almost everything that I have, and it can hang with the Gladiator and the Deadbolt in 90% of the situations that I put it in. So like we've done with our other build videos, let's take a look at this in three parts. So we'll do the exterior and the appearance, We'll do the chassis and the suspension, and then we'll do the drivetrain, and then we'll sum it all up. And as always, I'll put the links in the description down below for the products that I've used on this little thing. So let's check out the exterior and the appearance part first. All right, let's talk about the exterior and how this thing looks. So this is by far my most scale rig, and I really like it that way because I've tried to keep it like a sleeper. And when you look at this thing, it doesn't look that much different than stock. You know, the C10 is like when you're out with your buddies at the bar or the club and you see one of your buddies start messing around and start exchanging heated words with a dude who looks kind of athletic, kind of in shape, but as you get closer, you kind of see the like, like the cauliflower ear, you know, and you know that the dude can do some damage. It's a bit like the C10, that's what I was going for. Like the closer you get to it, the more you can kind of see that this thing's the real deal. Like you look at it, you can, you can kind of see the, the long travel shocks upside down, you can start to see the linkage in it. You start to see that the battery's up in the front. You know, there's, something's not right with this thing. The front tires are sagging under their own weight just standing there. So you kind of get the impression when you get close to it that something isn't stock on this thing at all. And it maybe it can throw down pretty hard if it needs to, which is exactly what I was going for. So to do that, so I've, I've gone with these kind of these scale looking Endura beadlock wheels. You know, I like these because they've got, you know, like um, the old school truck, like the old school square body Chevy and square body Ford truck looks. I like this style of wheel. I think it fits that era of build. And they match the stock. Like this is the stock tire on the back here. They match the stock rim pretty well. So it just has gives it a nice scale look. Plus they've got a good amount of weight to them and they just they're really easy to work on so i really like these wheels a lot 
I wrapped them in the Milestar Patagonia tires by RC Four Wheel Drive. This is an excellent tire. It is extremely grippy, especially on slick, rocky surfaces. So the Patagonias are great. I run these. These are not vented, but the wheels are vented. So I put the Endura brass rings inside the wheel in the front only, not in the back, because I wanted to bias the weight forward. And when I did that, it, it acts like vented wheels because the rings have holes in them. So what I do is I, I ended up just drilling the ring in the back so to give the rims or give the wheels a vented effect. So the tires are not vented, but the wheels are, which gives you that you know, super squishy feel to it. So they work really well. These are excellent, excellent tires. I did trim the body pretty significantly. I found right away that one of the biggest limiting factors on the C10, one of the things that is so critical to unlocking the true potential of this thing is you've got to trim the body. Just trimming the body alone really livens this thing up tremendously because the, the stock body just, it catches and it, you know, you can't get any extra travel out of it because it's just way too confining. So I tried to do like a nice flowing cut here. Uh, again, I use my snips and then use sandpaper to just kind of smooth this out and give it a nice kind of clean factory look to it while retaining the body shape as much as I could. So I'm really satisfied with how the exterior looks from the fenders. And they certainly are functional. You know, it's got plenty of room front and back to fully articulate without getting hung up on the body. What I did have to do, I had to remove the bumper when I put the... Patagonia is on because they're wide. They're so wide, they were ripping the bumper off. So I did have to take the front bumper off. I've got metal bumpers for it. You see, I've got the metal bumper in the rear by Endura. I had the matching front, but like I said, I had to take the front off because it was catching. And I liked the tires enough that it was it was a worthy sacrifice to keep the tires and get rid of the bumper. I did the. Spare tire carrier on the back. I like this look a lot. I think it's really cool. This is from Adaptive Designs from uh, Nick over there. This is a cool addition. Everything else is pretty much stock when you look at it. You know, I haven't done a lot from an appearance standpoint. Just like I said, I want to keep that sleeper look to it. So it's, it's unassuming, it's scale, and it doesn't look like a rock star until you get up close to it. So with that said, let's take a look at what's underneath all of this and check out the chassis and suspension. Okay, let's look at the chassis on here and the suspension setup. So you can see I'm running the Grizzly Works Low Center of Gravity chassis kit on this one as well. I've got this on pretty much all of my builds now. So this works really, really well. And it worked especially well on the C10 just because of the way that the chassis is nice and compact. It worked exceptionally well on here. So this allows me to relocate the battery up front, put the ESC in the back, and then gives you a multitude of different suspension mounting components or suspension mounting spots but as you can see I don't use those because I still opt to mount the shocks to the frame. For shocks on this I'm running the Endura 43 millimeter double barrels. Now I, uh, I struggle with these shocks a little bit because I find that they bind more than other brands. This build really helps me identify some of the things that I talk about most of the things that I talk about in my tips for shock setup because I had to do a lot of troubleshooting with this to get the suspension not to bind up. That's why you see like that they're upside down. I've got springs in the back but not in the front. So I, this is one of the ones that I did a lot of troubleshooting on to get sorted out. And getting the Endura straightened out took a considerable amount of work, more so than other brands. But now I feel like they work pretty well. And I've duplicated this setup on other rigs and it seems to work okay with these shocks. But I am running these 43 millimeters upside down. I mount them to the frame rails like I typically do. I'm running springs, the stock springs, on the back just to give it a little bit of an extra dampening effect and to kind of give it some compression on uphills. And it just seems to seems to work really well. I ran it with no springs for a long time and that worked excellent also. So this is my setup at the moment and it seems to work very well. Let's see up front. You can see for my steering components I am running the brass 
Endura steering linkage. It's got brass Endura steering knuckles. It has a heavy Endura brass diff cover up front, and it has the light diff cover in the back. So the, the diff cover in the back, the lighter version I think is five or six grams up front is 10 grams. So again, I try to bias the weight up front as much as I, much as possible. And with this chassis, the big battery and the brass components up front, this thing is really heavy up front and nice and light in the back and it climbs exceptionally well. It works great. Steering setup, I'm running the Emax servo with the Endura mount and the Endura servo horn as well. You know, I like to get that kit, $25 kit that comes with everything that you need to get it set up. That uh, is my go-to build, and that's what I've got here as well. I'm now running the plus seven millimeter brass hex extensions here. If you watch the Bronco build, you'll know exactly what I was talking about. These are the big hex extensions that I ran on the Bronco. I got an extra set for the C10. So these work really well. It kind of widens it out, but not to a ridiculous amount, and gives it a really nice stance and uh, a lot of capability here. And these things are are heavy too. I think they're about 16 or 17 grams a piece. So again, lots of weight down low, especially up front. Let's see, let's take a look at the linkage. I'll flip it over here. I am running the Endura stainless steel high clearance links on this. It is a four link conversion. You know, I always like to do the four link because that's a great way to get more articulation out of these things and it works really well. No exception here, these are these are nice links. The steel is a little heavier than the aluminum, which I like. It also has the ability to unscrew from these connections and I can upgrade to brass if I want to at a later date and change the colors if I so choose. So these are this is a nice linkage set and a fairly new addition to this that I just did recently. But uh, the high clearance links are nice and the four link I always do on my rigs because I feel like it makes a big difference. These linkages are a little different because they don't have the O-rings here at the mounting point. So I didn't do my O-ring trick. I usually will do one O-ring on each mounting position, but this, uh, but that is not applicable here because they don't have O-rings on this setup. But it, it works nice and smooth. You know, there's no, it doesn't bind or anything like that. So these are these are solid links. I like them a lot. Let's also take a look. One thing I almost forgot to mention that I get asked about a lot is the limiting straps. So you see these rubber bands up here in the front. So it's actually one rubber band that I loop around the mounting posts here and it links under the links here behind the servo. So I loop it around that point in between the drive shaft and the linkage up and over the body post and that is my limiting strap. So I like the, I like the rubber bands, it works really well. And I can loop this around as much as I want to adjust the, the tightness of the bands, which snugs up the front end, gives me more limiting ability. So the rubber bands work really well for me, and that's um, worked great on this build. So I think that's it from chassis and suspension. Let's take a look at the drivetrain. Drivetrain. This is going to be really simple because I haven't done hardly anything to the drivetrain on this. Let me take the big battery out. So you can see a little better. Really the only thing that I've done, transmission is stock, drive shafts are all stock. I haven't done anything to that at all. But, but the only thing I've done is I put this big Torque Beast from Mofo RC, the new Torque Beast 3.0 in 50 size in this thing. So this is a great fit. The Grizzly Works chassis fits it perfectly. It bolted right in on the stock plate and everything. So I didn't have to change anything at all other than just bolt this motor in and it works great. You know, it has tons of power. The C10 isn't super heavy, so this motor works really, really well with this rig and the setup that it is, just nice and smooth and torquey. And with the V2 electronics, so that's one thing we can look at here. When I did the brushless conversion on the Gladiator, I swapped out the V1 electronics from the C10 and put them on the Gladiator, so the C10 is now running the newer V2 electronics, which I really like for a brushed system. I feel like that, that setup is really nice and nice and easy to control and, and works really well. So I'm really happy with the V2 setup on here. It really helps me maximize the motor setup here. And so I think that's pretty much it from a drivetrain standpoint. Like I said, I haven't done much at all other than just that, that nice big motor in there. 
So let's wrap this up. Let's take one last look at it and close this out. All right, I think that's going to wrap it up for the C10 build. Like I said, not a tremendous amount of parts and performance things on this build. It really doesn't need much. The C10 is extremely capable. It's got you know, such a, a nice low center of gravity. The linkage is set up with you know, the right length. The wheelbase is, is proportioned the way it should be. And I think this is just a really good balance of power and weight distribution and chassis setup that I really just don't want to mess with it any more than I have. One of the recent things I've done was put the LCG chassis kit on it, which again just elevated the performance on it. But I don't know if I want to do anything else to it because I just I love how it looks. I love the sleeper look to it. Like it, it's so unassuming when you look at it, but then you get it out on the course, it will run circles around almost everything that I have. It's it's so funny. Like I put hundreds and hundreds of dollars into the deadbolt and the gladiator and then break out the little C10 before I even did half of this stuff to it. And it would do all, if not more, of everything that they could do on nearly every situation. So it's incredibly capable with very little modifications. And it's just super fun. I love how it looks. I love the color. I love the body style. So just an awesome little truck. And like I said, it's my little sleeper. I call it Mini Hulk because it's just the little, the little green monster. And it's just such a riot when I take it out and to see what it can do. It just makes me smile every time. So I love it. Great little truck. And I need to feature it more. But thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful. I'll put the links in the description down below for all the products that are on the C10 if you want to check them out. You know, if you're a C10 owner, let me know down below your thoughts. Do you love your little truck as much as I love mine? I like to hear from you guys, so let me know your thoughts. As always, I appreciate your time. Please like and subscribe if you haven't done so, and we'll see you in the next video.